you know, and what's interesting is, is when you started talking about that, you became this investigator for me. You're there going, hang on, this could be interesting. Like, this could be interesting. Like, what's the price that you've got in your head? What's the price I've got in my head? Roughly between 70 and 83% of communication isn't what comes out of your mouth or even the words that you're saying. It's actually nonverbal communication or body language as it's also known. I spoke to the expert in body language, Mark Bowden, about how we can use some of our body language and some of our nonverbal communication to build comfort and trust with clients, particularly during this time where we're stuck in a screen and we're not in the office in front of the client. Now before we jump into this amazing interview which is jam packed full of tips that you can take away with you and start using on clients today, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, remember it really helps the channel grow so I can keep making content like this. Let's jump into it. So we are joined by a very, very, very special guest. I'm so excited about this. We're joined by Mark Bowden who is an author, a public speaker, done uh, talks like TED Talks and on top of that is a master of body language and verbal communication, which is exactly why we've got him on here today. So Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Aaron, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. We've already chatted a little bit just to uh, connect with each other. And I know you're in, uh, you're just outside of London. It's where I used to hang out as well, London town. So uh, lovely to speak to you. Awesome. So why don't we start quite broad then, right? First of all, it'd be great for you to introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit more about you for anyone in the audience who hasn't heard of you. But coming across LinkedIn, I've seen you everywhere at the moment and obviously all over YouTube as well. Yeah. So Mark Bowden, expert in human behavior and body language. And what I say I do is I help people all over the world to stand out, to win trust, to gain credibility every time they communicate. And so right now, my guess is, is that you're experiencing, just like me, that a, a huge amount of the important communications that we're making are via video, uh, from the work from home office. And regardless of what happens with the current health crisis, as, as that drifts away, uh, the genie is out the bottle around this. So what I'm most focused on for my clients at the moment is how you do this really, really well. What are the structures that make this work really, really well in terms of sales, leadership, influence and persuasion? What can you do with your nonverbal communication and the design of your you know, environment to persuade and influence people uh, via camera? And I'm even doing that at the moment for Zoom uh, sales and onboarding. So, uh, so that's, that's me. That's what I do. That's really cool. And there's, there's so many angles in which we can look at this because Nonverbal communication and body language is so important, particularly in sales. And I think if you went up to the average salesperson and said, is nonverbal communication important? I think they'd say yes, but they no. wouldn't know how to codify it, become aware of it, and ultimately how to use it. But I think there'd be almost a subconscious rumbling that would say, yeah, this is important. So let's look at it from the, the broadness of sales. How important would you say it actually is in selling nowadays? Yeah, so selling for me, just like leadership, and they're the, the same two things as far as I'm concerned, is about behavioral change. If you're coming to sell to somebody, my guess is, is that they're either not buying, they're not buying enough, or, they, or they're not buying what you think they should buy. They are buying, but they're not buying what you think or know they should buy. Um, or they have been buying or they're buying, but you're worried they're going to stop buying or start buying something else. So now you're in the business of changing their behavior. And in order to change their behavior from from doing what they're not doing enough of at the moment for you to, to doing enough of that, you're going to have to change their mind in some way. You're going to have to change their reaction to the environment that's around them. And so we're in the change of thoughts and the change of behaviors when we're in sales. Now, just to move this a little bit further, Aaron, um, the, the, we judge each other. I judge you, you judge me, okay? And based on my judgment about you and your judgment about me, very quickly we work out, are we comfortable together? Is this gonna work out for us? And we make those judgments based on nonverbal communication in the main, okay? The, the biggest proportion of the data that we require in order to judge each other and feel like we made a good judgment, even if it's a bad judgment, yeah, I know that person isn't for me, you feel comfortable with that judgment. The majority of the information is visual. Some of the information is within the music of the voice tonality. 
and a tiny, tiny amount of the data we require to make that judgment is actually what somebody says or what you might read from them. So we judge each other mainly based on nonverbal communication. Can we be comfortable? Then we take that judgment and we prime our experience of the product or the service or the leadership based on that judgment. So Aaron, if I like you based on my initial judgment of you, I'm more likely to like what you present to me in terms of product and service. And here's the thing. If you are in competition, yeah, you might like the advantage of the liking. Now, if you're not in competition, if you hold a monopoly, you don't, if anybody out there is listening to this and they've got a monopoly or watching this and got a monopoly, switch off right now. You don't need me. You don't need Aaron. Like, you're all right. But if you are in significant competition right now, you're going to want to listen to what we have to tell you. So how would that practically happen then? So, and again, there's, there's two sides of the coin here, right? There's understanding it and spotting it in the client. So I've noticed and observed this behavior and now I need to change. And there's obviously in the salesperson themselves, how they can make this an awareness where mm. they can start creating that comfort for the client. Let's start on the client side. What should we be looking out for to help us understand that we've created an environment of comfort and we've created an environment where they have some rapport and some liking of us before we start, you know, going hell for lever on our product or our service. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. Okay. So, so here's all I want to think you to think about Aaron is, is the behaviors that you do when you're comfortable, okay? The behaviors that you do when you're comfortable, because you're, you're a human being just like most other people out there, okay? And so, you know, and so some, the majority of your behaviors are gonna be very similar to other people's behaviors. I know there, there's a lot of individual behavior out there, but the behaviors of comfort and discomfort are pretty similar across the planet in many, many different situations. So tell me this, Aaron, if you were comfortable in the presence of me, uh, and over video, just, just like we are now, just describe to me some of the things that you think you would be doing. Well, I guess thinking about it from a body language point of view, the shoulders would probably drop. I'd feel a lot more comfortable physically in myself. I imagine that I'll be paying a lot of attention to your face. I'll be paying a lot of attention to the words that are coming out of your mouth. Uh, a sort of warm glow inside because uh, <laughs> obviously you're, you're, you're a public speaker, so I'm, I'm naturally drawn to that as well. But I guess, yeah, yeah I think it's, it, when I think of comfort, I think of not being tense. I think of lots of eye contact. I think of uh, a general sense of relaxation and not a stiffness and a tightness. And like things like no arms crossed and whatnot. Yeah, great. So, so look, your, your first judgments on this are super accurate, <laughs> okay? Those are the kind of things you want to be looking out for in other people. Are they more open in their body? Okay, it's, this doesn't mean somebody's closed, by the way. Sometimes people are making a decision when they cross their arms, and, and it's a good sign. If, if you say to me, hey, Mark, what are you, I've given you a couple of options there, which do you think is really the best option for you and the organization? If I lean back and cross my arms, give me some time. I'm thinking about it. Okay. But in general, good open body language, leaning forward into the camera, great eye contact, focus. Okay. These are all, all good things. A sense of relaxation rather than being tense and closed. Think about the kind of behaviors. Erin, we, we were talking before and, and, and you used to live in Toronto, uh, just like I do. And we were talking about the cold. Um, that cold, you know, you, you, you've, you've been super cold out in the streets of Toronto and you come into your home or your condo and it's still cold in there, you know, as you take off your coat. The kind of body language you have is the kind of body language somebody has when they're not comfortable. They're trying to keep the heat in. Okay, they're tense, they're closed, they've turtled in like this. Imagine you come in from the cold and there is a beautiful wood roaring fire there in the home. Think about how you would open up your body language. You'd open up in all kinds of areas. Your body would relax and you'd be warm. So think about cold body language, warm body language. So, you know, that's really the, rather than going through for you, oh, look, here's the signals to look for. Let's look for what we think is warm body language and cold body language. And by the same token, if I'm on the sales side of this, 
I want to display to you warm body language because I want you to see the body language that you should mirror, you should emulate, you should copy. Sales is leadership. So I need to lead you to the sale. Okay, not there be running behind you and, and just mirroring what you do. I need to show you the behaviors, the warm behaviors to have as you approach the sale in an open way. I hope that makes sense to you, Aaron. Yeah, absolutely. That's no, really good. So the, the, the bit that stood out to me there was this idea around warm and cold and how, yeah. you know, almost you want to emulate those. That, you know, well, you don't want to be showing cold body language. and You don't want the client to be doing that. Right. But let's play devil's advocate here a bit, right? Please. Let's say we've got ourselves in a position where a customer is cold or they mm. are closed. Or they are lacking in that rapport or that liking of you or that comfort around you. Is there anything we can do from a body language point of view to actually, I don't want to, I'm desperate not to use the term manipulate, but I've got a feeling yeah. at some point I'm going to have to use it, That's right? Okay. Is there any way we, we can manipulate the client to become more warm and more open and more comfortable? Yeah. Okay. So here's what I want you to think about doing. And look, when, when I talk about manipulation, uh, you know, I'm using it from the, from the Latin of the uh, derivation of it, which means mani, which is to take your hands and to construct things in a different way. And you're trying to manipulate things so that people will get to a better state for them. Have you noticed that some people don't do what's best for them because they're stuck? And so you need to help them do the behavioral change that will get them unstuck and into the better position. You know you have the best product and service for them and they're stuck with this old competitor who's, who's selling them stuff that doesn't work for them. So they might be in a place where they have a bad experience of this. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna manipulate this by taking them in their imagination to a good experience. So let's, let's talk about a piece of, for want of anything else, a piece of software, okay? And, and they're stuck with the software that they already have in the organization. And I say to them, look, I just want to, and I, and I notice they're kind of, they're cold and they're stuck and I'm trying to present my product, my service to them, and they're cold and they're stuck. And I go, okay, here's what I want us to do. I just want you to imagine the best possible scenario here. If you had a product, a service that truly worked for you and the organization, just describe to me some of the things you'd be noticing, some of the things you'd be seeing, not only for yourself, but within the organization. So I've taken them to go, look, just imagine, okay? Because I want them to start imagining a better future and I wanna see how their body language opens up around that, okay? And I want to start emulating exactly that body language. And as I see them do that body language, I nod my head, I smile, okay? And at some point, I might see them go really big and open, okay? And at that point, I might go, hold it there, hold it there. Just tell me that again. Just talk to me in depth about that because I want to get them talking about the thing that has opened them up, keep them open, and then start attaching my product, my service, my ideas to that. So Aaron, give me, give me some feedback on that because, because that may sound to you and, and, and everybody else out there quite manipulative, okay? But, but, but what do you think might work about that and be, and be um, I guess, you know, the right thing to do in many situations? Well, I, I, I personally don't think there's an ethical conflict with that at all, right? I think right. that what you're fundamentally trying to do in sales is to create an environment where it's easy to get across your idea, your proposition and your value. It's never your decision. So right. if you can create an environment where that's possible, then you've succeeded. I personally don't think it's manipulative. I think ultimately it's a, a means to an end of you showing the customer the value. Right. That's the way I think. Right. I mean, look, uh, I wonder, I, I don't know whether you ever went to, you know, a university or college or anything like that. I, I did and many of the people out there may or may not have. But, but I kind of remember, you know, one of the things you kind of thought about was, you know, at the end of this, I will graduate. <laughs> You know, I'll be in a different state. And and I know for some people, they would kind of imagine themselves with the scroll, with the hat on, you know, uh, in the photograph. 
don't we do this all the time, which is to imagine a better state and then work our way towards it? Sometimes we just need some help, a coach, somebody to go, look, keep your eye on the prize here. What is the prize here? Don't get stuck in the pain. Get your eye on the prize. And sometimes the buyer, the purchaser has not really managed to get that to kind of elocute the prize and what it really looks like and sounds like and feels like and they've not lived in that body of, of here's how it would feel to me to have that prize and so I'm trying to move them into that state and move with them into that state as well to, to that to that point Aaron um, I'm often trying to train people in how to present to their prospect buying behaviors and it's very easy as the salesperson to present selling behaviors. So, so let's, let's go through that process. Just, um, just join in with me on this. When I say to you selling behaviors, what do you imagine in your head? The salesperson, you know, they're doing selling behaviors. What are they doing? Describe it. Well, archetypically, I'd probably say it's someone talking quite a lot, talking right. a lot of jargon, uh, not listening enough. Right. Um, and, and ultimately, again, trying to trying to present something right, um, right versus what I deem to be the right thing to do, which is learning about the client, trying to understand the client and ultimately then positioning your product once you've done that. Right. OK, so so that's kind of suggests to me with with we're, we're kind of talking there about, you know, really archetypal, you know, bad selling behaviors, which I totally agree with there. A, a better example of selling behaviors, which is being a better listener. OK, and and uh, and so forth and, and a better question asker. And now I want to go, what do you personally do when you're buying, when you're buying and you're and you're on that route to buying and it's feeling good? You're like, oh, this is a good journey. I'm feeling good. And calm. I think this is going to end well for me. Tell me some of the things that you personally do, Aaron. From a body language point of view, or just in general? In general, in general, body language, thought processes, here's what I say, here's what I'm, I'm doing. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, so I think, I think look, I, I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a bit of a sucker for buying things anyway, but I think yeah. it's probably quite an easy person to sell to, right? But, I, you know, I, I, it's a really good question. It's something I've thought about quite a lot, but definitely there's a lot of agreement. I agree with them a lot, right? So there's, I'm, I'm agreeing a lot with the person who's selling to me. Right. Um, also, on top of that, I, I, I feel like there's an understanding. So they, they realize there's a realization for why I need what I need. Right. Um, not being pushed. I feel like I'm being enabled to make my decision. I'm being enabled to, to purchase something. Right. Right. So you feel you feel enabled. It's your you're making the decision. You're very um, agreeable. OK, you kind of move along agreement. Um, so, so here's what I want to do. If I want to sell to you, I want to show you more of those behaviors. I want to join you being a buyer alongside you because quite frankly, and, and, and everybody in, in, in this environment will, will know this right now. There's probably not a lot I can ever tell you about my product or service that you can't find on the internet and know more about than I do. I mean, I find this constantly that I know more than the salesperson because I'm diligent and I'm fascinated by the thing I, I, I want to solve my problem and I want to get it right. I'm diligent about it. So I know a lot. I need help. I need help and support to know that I've made the right decision and that I've investigated this right. And I could go to anybody else in my family or organization. And when they go, well, why did you buy that? I'd be able to go, look, here's why this is a great decision. Because I've already had that conversation with somebody. I've already been joined on that conversation. So what I'm trying to train salespeople to do is join their customer on that investigation of what is the right thing to buy and, and be alongside them rather than being in antagonism with them, like selling at them and it becoming an argument. Yeah. Can I be in compliment to them? Like, you know, or can I be literally side by side with them going, 
let's investigate this. I don't know the answer to this. Let's go and investigate this together on this. Let me help you investigate. And so alongside that, I want the words that go with that. And I want the actions that go with that because I want, to, I want it to feel really good. And I want them to feel like they have a partner and a support network around this. G give me your feedback on that. How does that sound to you? Yeah, it's fascinating to be honest with you. Look, I think, I think w what's jumped out to me there is that this, the, one of the most underutilized things we do in sales is we forget that we're also buyers, right. no matter what we're buying, right? Like you know, whether it's a house, a car, or even a right. you know, egg and water crust sandwich, whatever it is. And I think exactly what you say: the more we can put ourselves in the buyer's position, or put yourself in the customer's position to understand their world, understand their journey, understand their decisions, and understand the context of their decisions, it's going to put us in a better place. And I love that. I'm really fascinated by that. This idea of actually becoming a companion with them on that journey. Um, and, and, and again, by, by, by definition, you're, you're creating equality as well, right? It's not yeah. about like you're above them or, or in, in a lot of cases, sales people perceive that they're below the buyer. Like, oh, I'm, I'm subservient to you. Right. You should never feel like that in a buying process. Right. Well, that's, that's the body language that comes when I become the order taker. I show up, you know, and I go, Aaron, what, what do you, you know, what do you want? What do you want? I'll get you anything. I will get you anything. And, and by the way, I will get it at a lower price than you can get it anywhere else. OK, I'll get it for you faster. I'll get it for you cheaper. And, and I'll throw in a whole bunch of other stuff with it. <laughs> and your brain is going, I don't even know what I, w I know. I need something because I've got a problem right now. OK, but I, but I don't know what it is I want. And I've already jumped to I can get you more faster, cheaper with a whole bunch of other stuff thrown in at the same time so no wonder it's not working i'm not saying you can't sell like that because we all know that you that you can um but but i'm going to suggest that, you know we're, we're at the moment we're thinking about selling products and services that 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 can't get sold very well via that you know stack them high ship it fast you know chuck a whole bunch of other stuff in modality i'm not saying it doesn't work but, but I'm saying that's not what we're doing uh, right now. That's a whole other sales process. And pretty much you can, a machine can do that. Uh, you don't need a human being to do that kind of, that kind of algorithm. So, so yeah, I'm fascinated by the idea of how can I join you on, on this, both non-verbally and verbally, but also how can I show you the behaviors that will best serve you to come to a decision? Let me give you an example of this. And again, it, it, it's not the example that suits everybody out there, but you, you'll get the point that I'm making here. I remember a number of times I have been to stores and I've got the thing that I want. I haven't been helped, but I've got the thing that I want. I know it's that pair of jeans. Okay, I've, I've, I've got myself there, it's that pair of jeans, they're the ones that fit me, it's the price that I want, okay. And I'm literally there going, how do I buy it? How do I check out? I don't even know how to check, how to check out. Like, I am not an educated buyer in that store. I don't, I literally can't see where the checkout is and there's nobody to go, let me take you through this. And I have personally, and I, I bet you've done the same, I've literally put the thing down and walked out of the store, partly out of the discomfort of, of not being, not knowing. Like, this is not comfortable for me not to know how to do this. And I've ditched three quarters of an hour of work on finding the right product for the thing of, you didn't take me the next step, help me buy talk me through it walk me through it but if somebody had come up to up to you up to me and and gone oh listen if you want to buy those let me just walk you through what most people do <laughs> it's like they're not telling me to buy it they're just going if you want to do it and and the choice is yours if you want to do it let me literally walk you through it let me take you through it like i'll go first so there's no embarrassment there's no discomfort here I will show you how I usually and some others usually go about buying this kind of thing. And, and again, I've, 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 had the, I've had the situation when I first started selling sales training uh, via video, long time ago now, like way before that was ever a market. Um, 
customers would literally go, we don't know how to buy this. We've never bought this before. So we don't know, we don't know how to buy this. And I, I would go, yeah, I've never sold this before. So I literally don't know how to sell this. Um, I don't know what price it should be. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how you'd buy it. I don't, and I would literally go, so what, what do you buy a lot of? You know, what do you, how do you normally buy stuff? So, so we weren't talking about, is this the right thing? We were talking about, what do you already do that would, if you did it that way, it could feel comfortable to you. And I went to a lot of organizations and we'd go, you know, we're finding a lot of our clients feel this is a bit like buying software. It's not software, but it's a bit like it. How, how would you be if we just investigated selling this to you like you currently buy software? Would that feel okay? People would go, yeah, that would feel, that would feel good. So, so anyway, I hope, I, I hope the, the, the spirit and sense of that uh, reaches people there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Look, I think for me that one of the things I was excited about talking to you about in general really is that there's a lot of, I suppose, writings and a lot of theory around delivering price, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> And again, like it's it's sort of like the great white buffalo of sales, right? And, and again, there's so much content out there and it's hard to know what's right and what's wrong. Right. Um, and there's so many sort of, you know, conflicting schools of thought as well. So let, let's talk a bit about that. When you're delivering price to someone, how should you do it? And what should you look out for in terms of the customer's reaction from a non-verbal point of view as well as a verbal point of view, but ideally from a non-verbal point of view? Hmm. It's really interesting. Yeah, so my, my instinct around this and my experience of, around this is price seems to come out of nowhere, doesn't it? <laughs> it kind of, you know, suddenly you've got a certain way and then it's like, okay, price. And price kind of parachutes out of nowhere and kind of lands in, with a thud on somebody's desk. Instead of before price is even discussed, getting, getting the ballpark of of area that somebody thinks the value would be, you know, so what do you think, you know, just, just your best guess. What do you think? And, and I can, you know, and I can put something down on a piece of paper and go, look, I'm going to write down per unit what the price of this is. Okay. Before, before I show you this, what feels to you the right, the right value? around this. Now, now, so both of us are kind of, are kind of risking something. We're going to show our hands here because then I can go, oh, wow. So, so I think this could be a bit of a shock to you, <laughs> you know, or I think, I think you're going to like this, but at <laughs> least now, you know, or, 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 or wow, like you couldn't have gauged this better, <laughs> you know, you couldn't have gauged this this better. I'm so pleased that you've, you've arrived at that idea. But at least now, you know, as this thing parachutes in, we've got some kind of conversation about about the territory that we're in as it parachutes in there, that it's either going to be an extreme surprise, uh, you know, or maybe I could go, I'm, I'm going to go away and work on this. Because, because <laughs> or, or you can see it, like you can, I can go away and work on this or you can see it knowing that I've already told you I'm going to go away and work on this because I think mm. this is going to have a sticker shock that I can't possibly imagine that you would be able to tolerate. But you tell, you tell me now, at least because, because that thing of price can be, can be, be tricky. It's a card that people hold. And the idea that people have in their head is a card that they hold. Anyway, give me some, now I don't know whether that, that that you know helps the that non-verbal aspect of it but again it's it's the non-verbal thing of i'm gonna place my i'm gonna be somewhat transparent around mm -hmm. this you know rather than what do yeah. you what do you, what do you want to pay all right let me make up a price <laughs> you know anyway, give me some feedback on that i'd be interested on in, in your thoughts yeah i mean look, <laughs> it feels like you're being meta to the situation, right? Is that there's, right. there's a, there's a natural dance that you have to do in pricing, right? Where both of you know that you could be inviting on a, a negotiation fundamentally, right? Right. Both the buyer and the seller. 
I like the way that you're being meta to that situation and calling it out by saying, well, let's let's try and work out what the value is like to you and what we deem our value to be. And it'd be interesting to see uh, <laughs> right. if there is a discrepancy, right? Which I think is quite interesting. Right. Is so there, what, is, what, well, let me just jump in there because what you've described to me there is an investigation. And now you're investigating price together. And that's what's, you know, and what's interesting is, is when you started talking about that, you became this investigator for me. You're there going, hang on, this could be interesting. Like, this could be interesting. Like, what's the price that you've got in your head? What's the price I've got in my head? I wonder how this is going to turn out. And that's very different from, all right, what, what price have you got in your head then? <laughs> and I'll keep my price in my... That, once I start being that character, that role, notice how my body language changes with you just naturally and the moment I become the investigator of price with you notice how my body language changes so some of this body language piece is often about picking the best role to play and really embodying that role that helps everybody get to the right place sorry I cut you off there Aaron so give me your, your, your I, know, I find that fascinating in itself I, I, I love this I love this idea because it feels a lot of the stuff that you're saying is is basically trying to collaborate with a client, right? Mm -hmm. Versus trying to sell to the client. Mm -hmm. If we if we look at that in, in terms of roles, because you know, just to sort of keep on theme, the, the role of the salesperson is should be, in my experience, sort of trusted advisor, expert, um, and and ultimately um, support and 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 uh, you know, de delivering value throughout the whole process. Yeah. I think it's similar, but what you're basically saying is, is that from the first interaction, you should almost be treating this like a partnership of exploration, right? So you collaborate together to learn about it at any process. So if you, I try, I always try and think about it from a sales process point of view. So even cold outreach to a client shouldn't be, yeah. I'm here to sell you something. It's I'm here to learn more about you and see if there possibly yeah. is something. Or during the questioning stages around, well, look, let's investigate this together to see if there's even a business case here all the way through to negotiation or pricing, which is, okay, well, let's, 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 let's basically put what we think it is down and then come together and make a right. decision whether there's a deficit there or not. Right. So you, you mentioned this quite a few times, and I find it really interesting that you're, you're basically talking about being almost an extension of their business during this while they're going through a buying process, right? Well, yeah, because otherwise I'm not sure, you know, this year and within the last you know, since the internet came about, I'm not sure otherwise what the value of the salesperson is. I mean, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but, you know, the salesperson to an extent used to be the person who, you know, knew all the numbers, knew all the, knew the product, knew, knew what the product did, uh, knew how it performed in certain and could, and, you know, there was training out there. It wasn't some of the training out there, like how you would learn every number in the, in the book so that you, so that you could you could go oh yeah that's part xyz t4 and that what's the price on that oh it's you know and it was like oh you know the memory genius has just walked in the room thank goodness you've got the salesperson it's like there is a there is there's a digital solution for that right now and it's and it's phenomenal uh, i listen i'm not saying you still can't be an expert in your field on product and service absolutely there's a, a place for that but I think the expertise now is knowing the relationship better, knowing where somebody is in that sales process and, and helping them along that sales process. Because I'm, I'm darned if I understand otherwise what the job of the salesperson is. But, but help me if I'm, <laughs> if no, I'm wrong on that. It's changed a lot, right? Like the modern salesperson has changed a lot. I mean, even since I've been in the, the realm of sales, right, for the last sort of 16 years or so. Right. Um, and obviously we've seen technology gobble up a large part of the role of a salesperson. I think there'll always be a need for some human touch, but I personally think that's going to move into the customer support or customer um, customer service point of view. So, so let me ask you this then, right? I'm, I'm, I'm really interested to learn this. So if you were... If you had a, a, a brand new salesperson who'd just gone through their onboarding and you could give them one or two real tips about, not even from a sales perspective, but being a better communicator with the way that they use their body, what would be the sort of two or three nuggets that you'd leave them with? Yeah, so it, exactly what you're doing right now, which is you're coming closer into the camera and you're, you're using 
the, the desk in front of you. Number one, to take the weight off your spine because we're on these things all day. But what it's doing is it's pushing your hands up into frame, which means I've got way more context and way more gesture to take into account. Not only is your face nice and big in the frame, so I got, I've got plenty of, of human characteristics to attend to, but also your gestures are helping me understand what the rhythm of your speech is with these baton gestures you give me every now and again. Uh, you're also showing me sometimes open palm gestures, which is a great signal of, of trust. You know, no tools, no weapons, nothing in my hands. I can be trusted. I'm low risk. And then every now and again, you're showing me little descriptor gestures or illustrator gestures, which kind of help paint the picture of it. So if somebody had come to me and they're, they're new to sales and they're like, and I'm on camera and I'm doing this, it's like, bring your hands up into the frame. You are not a talking head. Okay. The internet will provide lots of data to this person in a word form or a picture form of product or service or words about the product or service. I need you to take me through this, this more connected, emotional, social journey of going from not knowing what to do to knowing I did the right thing. <laughs> okay, that's, that's what I believe is the real value of the salesperson is me getting off the call going, I feel, con I spoke with, with Aaron, I feel confident about this. I think I can go in front of my CEO and when the CEO goes, so what, so hang on, so we're spending what? <laughs> we're, we're, we're spending how much? Why? I've already had this conversation with Aaron. We've gone through a lot of stuff around that and I feel confident <laughs> about, about my decision. I think, that's what the salesperson can help me with. And in order to do that, you've got to help me through this emotional journey. You've got to help me help me be a great communicator as well. Hope that makes sense. 100%. Really, really useful. Really, really useful. Well, if people want to get hold of you, Mark, or they want to see any of your stuff, what's the best place? Yeah, uh, just Google me, Mark Bowden, M-A-R-K-B-O-W-D-E-N, and you'll find me, you'll find Truth Plane, my company, you'll be, you'll get into the, you know, the rabbit hole of online training there and lots of videos for free there. So just, just Mark Bowden, Truth Plane, you'll find me, disappear down that rabbit hole, link in with me as well. That's a super easy way to connect. Well, I'll make sure that uh, all of your stuff's at the bottom there so you guys can just right. click on it and get a hold of Mark. And one thing I'd suggest is I've watched his TED Talk at uh, Toronto TEDx and it is absolutely brilliant. Great combination of humour, real real learning in there and uh, some interesting audience participation. Yeah. <laughs> <We'll say. laughs> so uh, make sure you give that a watch. Well, Mark, thank you so much for joining. I've learned an absolute heap and it's been a real pleasure. So thank you very much indeed for coming on board. No, my pleasure. Great to be with somebody who's really dedicated to sales and knows how important it is and how to do it right. So thanks for having me around you. I don't know about you guys, but I had to watch that two or three times to make sure that I was extracting all the gold from the stuff that was coming out of Mark's mouth. He is a true expert in his field. Not only that, it's interesting that he's collaborating with companies to look at it from a sales perspective as well. The two or three key things that jumped out to me there was this idea around warm versus cold language and also about how he needs to think what it's like to be a buyer and encourage those behaviors within the buyer. And lastly, I love that negotiation tip at the end where you get the customer to write down what they think the product's worth and you write down the actual value of your product and then you come together and collaborate on that price point. Okay guys, well look, remember to subscribe, remember to like, remember to share, help this channel grow and help more people see these videos. And as always, happy selling.